Hello guys, welcome to Ankit Sunil Wits. Today I'll teach you how to do a perfect obstetric examination for your examination purposes. Just before the examination, make sure you explain the full procedure to the patient and take a informed consent. Or always stand on the right side of the patient. Make sure lighting is adequate and natural. Privacy of the patient to be maintained. Use a screen. If the examiner is a male, then try to have a female attender with you who could be a nurse or a, your colleague. In general examination, uh, you start by saying patient is comfortable at rest. Patient is conscious. Patient could be comatose also, but these cases won't be given in your exam. But the cause of comatose could be hypoglycemia or post seizure or could be anything. Patient is oriented to time and place. Then your examiner may ask what could be the cause of disorientation. Disorientation could be there in eclampsia, shock, septicemia or psychosis. Then you talk about the build of the patient, uh, which is a skeletal parameter and talk about the nourishment. Nourishment is basically depends on the BMI. Uh, always remember to uh, calculate BMI based on patient's pre-pregnancy weight. If the height is less than 140 centimeter, then out of these patients, only 40% of the patient will have CPD. The cause of height less than 140 centimeter could be uh, some any abnormality in pituitary or any uh, Turner syndrome. Always make sure you measure the abdominal girth. If the girth is more than 100 centimeter, then it could be considered as abnormal or maybe because of polyhydromnia or due to because of obesity. Pallor, remember to see pallor over the facial skin, at the palpable conjunctiva, nail bed or oral or vaginal mucosa. It could be because of anemia, hemorrhage, antipartum hemorrhage, postpartum hemorrhage or because of any genital malignancy. Then you look for ictrus. Ictrus could be because of preeclampsia, eclampsia, hepatitis or any antituberculous drug. Then you look for sinuses. Sinuses could be there in severe cardiac disease or respiratory illnesses or prolonged eclampsia. Because during the seizure, patient may aspirate and can cause sinuses. Look for clubbing. Clubbing have lot of causes. Could be heart diseases, lung diseases or gastrointestinal diseases. Look for generalized lymphadenopathy, mainly because of malignancy. Then look for pedal edema. It could be physiological or pathological. Uh, vitals, you have to always say something like 120 by 80 mm of Hg in sitting or left lateral position. When the patient is in sitting or left lateral position, it relieves the compression by the uterus. Uh, BP could be high. If the BP is more than 140 or by 90, uh, in two occasions, then the, we can label the patient as gestation hypotension. Uh, the difference between the two occasions should be minimum 4 to 6 hours. Cause of decrease in blood pressure could be shock, dehydration or any hemorrhage. Pulse, always try to tell it like 80 beats per minute, regular rhythm, good volume, normal character, no, no radio femoral delay, all the peripheral pulses was felt, no vessel thickening. Generally in pregnancy, 10 to 15 beats per minute is increased. But if there is a severe increase in the pulse, it could be because of infection, fever, fluid loss or patient is little scared or patient have just recently done some physical activity and then have come for examination. Uh, respiratory rate you try to tell per minute. Temperature a febrile or febrile. Basically some examiner will even wants to know the exact temperature you have measured with thermometer or not. SpO2 you can measure if you have a pulse oximeter. In head to toe examination you have to look at the face, look for any signs of SLE or Cushing. SLE patient may have history of recurrent abortions. Look for any hirsutism, hydration status at tongue. Patient could be dehydrated because of hyperemesis gravidarum, diarrhea or chemotherapy. Periodontal diseases are linked with preterm labor. Look for any sign of malnutrition. In other system examination, first you look for cardiovascular system in that you mention the heart rate, rhythm, uh, heart, heart sound, heard or not, S1 or S2, any additional sounds were heard like murmur, rub or gallop or any click. Then in respiratory system, mention about normal vesicular breath sounds were heard, no additional sounds were heard, chest was clear to percussion, no tenderness to palpation. Tenderness could be there in empyema, breast examination, whether breast is symmetrical or asymmetrical or any nipple retraction. It is important to know about nipple retraction because if the nipple is uh, retracted, then after the birth of the baby, it will be very difficult to feed the baby. So it is important to teach the patient how to mechanically evert the nipple or look for any palpable mass. In thyroid, look for any thyromegaly is there. Generally, the mild thyromegaly could be there in normally in the pregnancy. Look for any mass palpable in thyroid. 
then examine the gait and the spine any pelvic or any spine malformation is there or any tenderness in the spine then in the abdominal examination prior to ex abdominal examination it is important to take consent cover the lower limbs with bed sheet use screen privacy to be maintained always uh, try to have female attender with you if you're, if our examiner is a male maybe your colleague or nurse and ask her to void the bladder and then come because it may interfere with the pelvic grip a uh, full bladder may also increase fundal height in inspection you have to look whether abdomen is uniformly distended or irregularly distended if flanks are full it means a uh, gestation is is near term uh, look for all the cordons move equally with respiration or not look for the umbilicus position central deviated to up down or right or left talk about umbilicus shape normally it is inverted but uh, it could be flush to skin also inverted umbilicus basically you will see uh, during ascites look for any scar especially previous cesarean scar then you have to talk about the length of the scar shape of the scar site of the scar heal by primary or secondary or tertiary intention healing by tertiary intention means it is healed with some graft secondary intention means there is some stretching of the tissue or some infection have occurred during the healing and rest if it is normally healed it's you can call as primary intention linear nigra on the midline linear and pigmented stria gravidum are pink and white lines then look for any visible pulsation or any engorged veins look for hernia orifice inguinal or femoral whether they are free or they or they are full so moving on with the palpation part before the palpation make sure you rub your hands and warm them patient should not feel uncomfortable with your cold hand in palpation first we have to measure fundal height it will tell the gestation age in weeks even mention it whether flanks are full or not patient's leg will be in semi flex position with your right hand you have to correct the dextro or levo rotation of the uterus with the ulnar border of your left hand you have to feel the resistance of the uterine fundus in this you can move your left hand from upward to downward or else downward to upward at the time of 24 weeks fundus resistance would be felt at at the level of umbilicus and at the level of xiphoid by 36 week after 36 week uh, fundus resistance will start to come down and flanks will become full here are the causes of increased fundal height and decrease in increase wrong dates are most common the other causes could be polyhydramnia multiple pregnancy macrosomy or full bladder fundal height would be decreased it be iugr if there is a difference between 4 weeks uh, in the fundal height and the real gestation age uh, other cause could be wrong dates oligohydramnia intrauterine death or transverse lie in sense of fundal height you have to take the consent from the patient to mark on her abdomen where you felt the fundus resistance then you have to tell the patient to extend her legs now use the inside of the tape uh, to eliminate the observer bias and measure the distance in centimeter between pubic symphysis and the fundus generally it will correspond between 24 to 36 weeks variation of plus or minus 2 is accepted in this next is fundal grip here in fundal grip we have to palpate gently remember not to poke the patient move one hand at one time do not move both the hands at one time if it is head then you have to make sure to mention it like it heart globular with bilateral mass suggestive of head if it is a breach you have to say it like it's a firm broad irregular and non bilateral mass suggestive of breach if it is on transverse lie then in the fundus grip you won't be able to feel any palpable part of the fetus in the sec grip again with one hand you have to support and with the second hand you have to palpate you have to move one hand at one time here you can also look for the tone of the uterus whether it is contracted or relaxed generally it would be relaxed which makes easier for you to palpate the uterus if you can feel smooth curvilinear resistance then it is suggestive of back of the fetus and if it is multiple knobby projection then it suggests of limbs of the fetus like a content you'll say it is as reduced when the uterus is gripped over the baby you won't be able to palpate any fetal parts in that mostly cause would be oligohydramnia and the fundal height would be also less it would be increased when fetus would be bloating and when you try to palpate it is bouncing back you won't be able to palpate the fetal parts properly and fundus side would be increased mostly cause would be polyhydramnia lacquer content would be normal or adequate when fetal parts are easily palpable then the first pelvic grip put your ulnar border of your right hand on the upper part of the pubic symphysis and try to palpate the fetus side between your thumb and the fingers look for the fetal head whether it is bilateral or not in transverse lie 
uh, this script would be empty another thing which you have to tell is how many fifth of the fetal head is palpable when it is less than two fifth or uh, means when it is one fifth or less than one fifth of the finger it means head is engaged the second pelvic grip examiner's face have to be toward patient's feet and you have to palpate the lower abdomen from laterally toward the medial side and here we have to look for whether examiner's hands are converging or diverging and we have to look for the level of sinciput and the occiput of the fetus head here we can see if the occiput is lower than the sinciput then we can say it is well flexed head if the sinciput and occiput are in same level then we can call it as deflexed head hands of the examiners are converging it means not engaged diverging hands means engaged second pelvic grip is most important because it is most comfortable for the patient and gives the most of the informations like presenting part of the fetus whether the head is engaged and or not what is the attitude of the fetus the definition for engagement of head which is said is when the biparietal diameter of the fetal head passes through the pelvic rim then you have to look for the scar tenderness if the patient gives the history of previous cesarean section uh, remember skin scar and uterine scar could be of different shape or size if this is the abdomen the uterine scar could be of fan and stale incision mostly which is done in cesarean section but the skin incision could be longitudinal or transfer so you have to palpate over the uterine scar which would be mostly fan and stale incision you have to palpate and you have to look at the patient face for any wincing then only you can say scar tenderness is present or not scar tenderness is a sign of scar dehiscence or rupture then you have to auscultate for the fetal heart sound it tells whether fetus is alive or not generally with the ultrasound you, uh, heart rate could be heard at the 6th week but clinically you can only hear it only after 18 to 20 weeks normal fetal heart sound is 110 to 160 if it is twin pregnancy then there should be two distinct fetal heart sound which should be at least 10 cm apart with the difference of 10 beats per minute or more and should be observed by two observers and make sure to palpate for the radial artery of the mother to distinguish it between from the uterine artery bruit or a fetal heart sound uh, uterine artery bruit will always sync with the radial artery but the fetal heart sound would not sync with the radial artery of the mother if it is a breech presentation then fetal heart sounds would be above the umbilicus if it is a cephalic uh, presentation then fetal heart sound would be below umbilicus here is the location of the fetal heart sound like uh, mostly uh, left occipital posterior then it would be toward the flanks if the baby's position is left occipital anterior then it would be more toward uh, at the spino umbilical line then you have to estimate the fetal weight using johnson's formula which is fundal height in centimeter subtracted by n multiply by 155 which will give you weight in grams of the baby n is 12 if the head is unengaged n is equals to 11 when the head is engaged this formula is not applicable for multiple pregnancy and for ultrasound we can use head logs or shepherd's formula for calculating fetal weight finally you have to tell the diagnosis you have to tell the age of the patient obstructive index of the patient you have to tell the gestation age then you have to tell whether she have any comorbidities then you have to tell your diagnosis which you have come across and if you, if she have any complications related to her diagnosis and then you have to tell with live single fetuses in cephalic presentation with adequate like uh, not in labor admitted for further evaluation or also you can say admitted for safe confinement or delivery